This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Janja Kielek. Right now I'm sitting down with Karen Agnes, founder and president of Network of Enlightened Women. Karen, it's wonderful to have you here. Great to be with you. It's wonderful. morning of CPAC. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And big, big energy in the air. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so tell me a little bit about Network for Enlightened Women. It's the Network of Enlightened Women, known as NEW. Uh, is the nation's premier organization for conservative university women. So we are organized as women's leadership organizations on campuses across the country. And in addition to that, we have some national programming where we bring women together and create a community so that conservative women feel like they've got a, a conservative young women feel like they've got a home too. Fantastic. So with these interviews here at mm -hmm. CPAC, I, I want to know what do you feel is the most important message to share for conservative women? To speak out, you're not alone, there's a community for you. Um, and that's been a message that we've been really promoting among young women for over a decade now. And I'm excited to share today that we've got a new book out featuring these women. So she's conser conservative, stories of trials and triumphs on America's college campuses. And this book features 22 essays from young women who've been a part of NEW, either current students or alums. Um, and it's a great way. Our women are amazing women, and so we think that they really can share the message of why, you know, the challenges they faced on campuses as conservatives, and then why they felt comfortable speaking out. And we are confident this is going to inspire more young women to speak out as conservatives. Can you give us a little bit of a hint of what of one of these stories might look like, like what people could expect? Yeah, so it was really interesting for me, um, reading through the essays, to see what some of the common themes that emerged were. And one thing that I now consider pretty like sad in reading them is that multiple women started their story saying that before they stepped foot on campus, they felt pressure to stay silent as conservatives. So we've got a story from a, a student at George Washington University, one so at Harvard. So political correctness, this sort of thing? Yes, one at University of Florida, all had that common theme at the beginning. And while they're powerful stories, that's disheartening to hear um, that they felt that pressure before they even stepped on campus. Um, and we saw a study last year that came out showing that I think there's a 12 to 1 ratio among student facing administrators, liberal to conservative. So you sense like, okay, the administrators are that way, the liberal faculty, we've seen a study where it's a 6 to 1 ratio, liberal to conservative. But what I found among a lot of these women is they really felt the peer pressure as well. And for a lot of women on campus, it's not just grades that matter, but also the social scene and the social atmosphere. And I think it's a real problem if these women feel like the culture on campus is telling them that their voice doesn't matter and that they should stay silent. So, you know, there's a lot of evidence out there, right, that this is a very, very real problem mm -hmm. for folks that, uh, that have this, you know, seemingly unorthodox, I'll say that in quotes, mm -hmm. conservative view. And it actually is, feels somewhat threatening to, mm -hmm. to come out. So what support will someone get if they decide to basically stand up and be open and potentially face being ostracized by their peers? You know, it's tough um, for many of them, but I think that's why it's important to have um, events like CPAC, where there's a lot of conservatives in one room, um, organizations like NEW, where there's that community. Because we find among these young women, the community matters. And then often, once one person speaks up, then others who had been silent speak up as well. So they then create their own, own community there. Um, and so that's what I always encourage our students to do, is speak up, your views are valid, you should be proud in your in views, engage civilly with the other side, um, and find those like-minded peers. Um, and you know, you're not going to agree on everything, but who will at least respect your views. That's what they should look for. So aside from connecting with other women who will be conservative on campus, what kind of support does a network of enlightened women provide? Yeah, so we provide um, resources for students, so books by authors when they come out by conservative women or about conservative ideas, uh, professional development training. We've seen that our students are really interested in this and that the left has done a good job um, on this with uh, liberal women on campus, so we've been trying to provide you know, more connections to get them jobs and internships, cover letter um, support and you know, tips. So the professional development as well. 
and then giving them the tools when they hear an argument on campus of how to engage in an effective way with ideas. So for example, one idea we often hear on campus is that women are going to get paid you know, about 23% less just because they're women, right? This idea that there's a pay gap. So providing them with the data of here's where the numbers actually come from and here's what they actually mean. So, so it's like if engage. you pick certain jobs, you you may get paid less, but if you pick other jobs, you'll... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. part of it, right? Choices right. that we make. Right. Um, and I right. want women to be able to make choices um, and to build the lives they want to build. So I want them to actually know what's happening, not just hear this narrative that's out there. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you're doing really important work. Oh, well, thank you. It's so, really wonderful to have you here. Yeah, great to be with you. Thank you.